The Hidden Empire 1. City-states. Did the world wars, revolutions and big events of human history happen naturally or coincidentally, or were they calculated and pre-planned? If they were pre-planned, who planned them? The answer to this question can be found within the boundaries of three of the world's most powerful cities. Those three cities belong to no nation and pay no taxes. They are Washington the District of Columbia, which is not part of the city of Washington or the United States. The inner city of London, which is not part of London or England and Vatican City, which is not part of Rome or Italy. These cities, called city-states, have their own independent flag, their own separate laws and their own separate identity. 2. Vatican City gracing the walls of St. Peter's Basilica is the Vatican-approved image of God. An angry bearded man in the sky, painted by Michelangelo. Cruel slash violent images of God's tortured son, suffering, bleeding and dying with horns gouged through his skull flash nails pounded through his feet and hands are on display throughout the Vatican. These images serve as reminders that God allowed his son to be tortured and killed to save the souls of human beings who are all born sinners. The Vatican rules over approximately to be n of the world's six dot to be n people. The colossal wealth of the Vatican includes enormous investments with the Rothschilds in Britain, France, USA, with giant oil and weapons corporations like Shell and General Electric. The Vatican solid gold bullion, worth billions is stored with the Rothschild controlled Bank of England and the United States Federal Reserve Bank. The Catholic Church is the biggest financial power, wealth accumulator and property owner in existence possessing more material wealth than any bank, corporation, giant trust or government anywhere on the globe. While two-thirds of the world earns less than two dollars a day and one-fifth of the world is underfed or starving to death, the Vatican hoards the world's wealth, profits from it on the stock market and at the same time preaches about giving. So how did the Vatican accumulate all that wealth over the millennium? One method was to put a price tag on sin. Many bishops and popes actively marketed guilt sin and fear for profit, by selling indulgences. Worshippers were encouraged to prepay for sin they hadn't yet committed and get pardoned ahead of time. Those who didn't pay up risk the eternal damnation. Another method was to get wealthy land owners to hand over their land slash fortune to the church on their deathbed, in exchange for a blessing which would supposedly enable them to go to heaven. Pope Leo V rebuilt St. Peter's Basilica, by selling tickets out of hell and tickets to heaven. During the Dark Ages, the Catholic Church not only hoarded the wealth they collected from the poor, but they hoarded knowledge. They kept the masses ignorant and in the dark by denying them the basic education. They also prohibited anyone from reading or even possessing the Bible, under pain of death. Between 1095 to 1290 80 the Pope launched seven bloodbaths called the Christian Crusades, torturing, murdering, beheading and mass murdering hundreds of thousands of Muslims and Jews in the name of God. The Pope's brutal solders were called Knights Templar or Knights of the Temple of Solomon and evolved into today's secretive brotherhood called the Freemasons. Between 1450 to 1780 the Catholic Church followed up their holy terror with the Inquisition. Based on rumors of practicing witchcraft, the Catholic Church hunted down, tortured and burned alive tens of one thousands of innocent women at the stake. During World War II the Vatican was criticized for supporting Hitler and his Nazi regime. To this day, the Vatican is still under investigation for plundering Nazi gold from the Swiss bank accounts of Jewish Holocaust victims. Over the past five decades more than 1,500 priests and bishops have been identified in the sexual assault of tens of thousands of boys and girls in their trusting congregations and orphanages. Why is the filthy rich institution preaching spiritual values of poverty and chastity while cardinals, bishops and priests cover up their crimes of sexual abuse? Why has the Church fought and resisted the compensation claims of their sexually, emotionally and spiritually traumatized victims? 3. The City of London Like Vatican City, London's inner city is also a privately owned corporation or city-state, located right in the middle of Greater London. It became a sovereign state in 1694 when King William I.I. of Orange privatized and turned the Bank of England over to the bankers. Today, the city-state of London is the world's financial power center and the wealthiest square mile on the face of the earth. It houses the Rothschild-controlled Bank of England, Lloyds of London, the London Stock Exchange, all British banks, the branch offices of 385 foreign banks and 70 United States banks. It has its own courts, its own laws, 
its own flag and its own police force. It is not part of Greater London, or England, or the British Commonwealth and pays no taxes. The city-state of London houses Fleet Street's newspaper and publishing monopolies. It is also the headquarters for worldwide English Freemasonry and headquarters for the worldwide money cartel known as the Crown. Contrary to popular belief, the Crown is not the royal family or the British monarch. The Crown is the private corporate city-state of London. It has a council of 12 members who rule the corporation under a mayor, called the Lord Mayor. The Lord Mayor and his 12-member council serves as proxies for representatives who sit in for 13 of the world's wealthiest, most powerful banking families, including the Rothschild family, the Warburg family, the Oppenheimer family and the Schiff family. These families and their descendants run the Crown Corporation of London. The Crown Corporation holds the title to worldwide Crown land in Crown colonies like Canada, Australia and New Zealand. British Parliament and the British Prime Minister serve as a public front for the hidden power of these ruling Crown families. For the District of Columbia. Like the city-states of London and the Vatican, a third city-state was officially created in 1982. That city-state is called the District of Columbia and is located on 10 square miles of land in the heart of Washington. The District of Columbia flies its own flag and has its own independent constitution. The Constitution for the District of Columbia operates under a tyrannical Roman law known as Lex Pari, which bears no resemblance to the United States Constitution. When Congress passed the Act of 1871 it created a separate corporation known as the United States and Corporate Government for the District of Columbia. This treasonous act allowed the District of Columbia to operate as a corporation outside the original Constitution of the United States and outside of the best interests of American citizens. Although geographically separate, the city-states of London, the Vatican and the District of Columbia are one interlocking empire called the Empire of the City. The flag of Washington's District of Columbia has three red stars. One for each city-state in the three-city empire. This corporate empire of three city-states controls the world economically, through London's inner city, militarily through the District of Columbia and spiritually through the Vatican. 5. The USA, a crown colony. The sobering study of the signed treaties and charters between Britain and the United States exposes a shocking truth. The United States has always been and still is a British crown colony. King James I was famous not for just translating the Bible into the King James Version, but for signing the first charter of Virginia in 1606. That charter granted America's British forefathers a license to settle and colonize America. The Charter also guaranteed the future kings slash queens of England would have sovereign authority over all citizens and colonized land in America, stolen from the Indians. After America declared its independence from Great Britain, the Treaty of 1783 was signed. That treaty specifically identifies the King of England as the Prince of the United States and contradicts the belief that America won the War of Independence. Although King George III of England gave up most of his claims over American colonies, he kept his right to continue receiving payment for his business venture of colonizing America. If America had really won the War of Independence, they would never have agreed to pay debts and reparations to the King of England. America's blood-soaked War of Independence against the British bankrupted America and turned its citizens into permanent debt slaves of the King. In the War of 1812, the British torched and burned to the ground the White House and all the United States government buildings destroying ratification records of the United States Constitution. Most of the United States citizens believe that the United States is a country and the President is the most powerful man on earth. The United States is not a country. It is a corporation. And the President is President of the Corporation of the United States. He and his elected officials work for the corporation, not for the American people. Since the United States is a corporation, who owns the Corporation of the United States? like Canada and Australia whose leaders are Prime Ministers of the Queen and whose land is called Crown Land, the United States is just another Crown Colony. Crown Colonies are controlled by the Empire of the Three City-States. 6. Obelisks At the center of each city-state is a towering phallic-shaped stone monument called an obelisk that points skyward. In D.C. City-State, the obelisk known as the Washington Monument was dedicated to the Freemason George Washington by the Freemason Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia. 250 Masonic Lodges finance the Washington Obelisk Monument, 
including the Knights Templar Masonic Order. At the heart of London City State, is a 187-ton 69-foot-tall Egyptian obelisk called Cleopatra's Needle. It was transported from Egypt and erupted on the banks of the River Thames. In Vatican City, another Egyptian obelisk towers high above St. Peter's Square. Obelisks are phallic-shaped monuments honoring the pagan sun god of ancient Egypt called Amenhotep. The spirit of this pagan god is said to reside within the obelisk.